Welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today, part two, we are going to be taking all that Terraform code that we set up, our Azure function, our key vault, our app insights, and we're going to set up a CI CD pipeline, well, a CD pipeline for starters, to actually provision our environment. I like to get kind of that pilot light, you know, connective tissue in place early on a project, um, even if I don't provision all the things. Um, but just to know that that stuff's ready so that I can uh, iterate on it, so that my team can iterate on it as we move forward. It seems kind of backwards setting up a CD pipeline when we're not actually having any code to deploy to it. Um, but I think having that connective tissue in place early is a good uh, way to get, get off on the right foot on a project. So this episode, we're going to be dropping into GitHub Actions YAML, and we're going to be coding up our Terraform provision process using Terraform state. We're going to have to configure some secrets and some variables um, within our GitHub repository. And we should be able to have something provisioned out in Azure this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my YAML file. I mean, with Git GitHub Actions, you, you have to have a name. So I'm going to call this, uh, I guess I'll just call this CD, right? and you need to have a trigger. So for starters, I'm not gonna to be too picky. I'm just gonna have it declared on a push. Um, branch two branches, uh, main, of course, I'm being a baddie and I am, I am, I'm actually uh, committing directly into main. So I haven't set up Git flow or anything like that. Um, of course, it's just me, I'm building this little thing by myself, but please be aware that when you work on a team, um, you're going to have a pull request process and things are going to be put into place. So um, for uh, you can also set up uh, paths, which allows you to control when this particular YAML file gets triggered. And because this is going to be a CD path, I might as well just go set it up to be, you know, off the source code repository. And, and basically anytime you change anything in the Terraform directory. Um, and anything below that. It might also make sense to include the GitHub workflow folder since we are gonna be making changes to GitHub workflow and just making sure everything is working. So that's, uh, that's kind of the setup for your triggers. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can declare kind of uh, file-wide environment variables. So one that I always like to set is my working directory because the working directory sounds like that would always be the same, but it really doesn't have to be. Um, sometimes you might have repositories where you might have multiple Terraform projects, multiple Terraform root modules that you want to provision and they're in different working directories. So being able to specify the Terraform working directory, I think is a very good thing. The next thing I think you know, I, I did put this in my TFRs file, but I might want to take it out of there, the application name. Um, so I think, you know, we probably just want to set the application name and environment name in here, and we'll, we'll go from there. I think, I think that's, uh, that's it. You know, maybe when we get into, you know, .NET, there might be some additional variables that we can think about at that top level, uh, but that's it. Uh, that we need for now for Terraform. So uh, next you need to think about what jobs you want and what they're going to do. In this case, we're just going to be doing a Terraform apply. So we don't really need to do it, worry about .NET or deployment yet, but in future episodes, I'm going to add a .NET build um, where, I, where I take my Azure function project and I build it and then I publish and do all those things. And then there's going to be a step where um, I deploy the Azure function zip package to um, the Azure function app that I provision um, today using Terraform. So the, the job that I want to set up, I'm just going to call it Terraform. I think so right, right off the bat, the steps that I need to do, um, you, always, you always need to do uses this action, which basically checks out the code from the repository. Kind of an important step. Um, now there is, there is another um, action that's pretty important when working with Terraform. Um, oh, I should be very careful about my YAML, my YAMLs here. Um, HashiCorp has a uh, official step, you know, that will basically set up Terraform and a specific version of Terraform, which is a good idea. And I'm going to use 1.5.5, the version that shall be known in infamy <laughs> for for you know why. 
um, and we're going to turn off the Terraform wrapper. Now this Terraform wrapper is um, like a, a feature of this um, action which I have found makes it more difficult to use um, Terraform outputs, at least the way that I use Terraform outputs. So I typically turn off um, you know the wrapper and just you know go go with the go with it regularly so I can so I can output um, Terraform variables the way that I like to. Um, next, we are going to set up our Terraform apply. And so now that we have Terraform installed, um, we can go do those things. And so um, we probably need to set up some baseline things. So just like in Azure DevOps, when I set up those pipelines, there's a few, you know, um, attributes that need to set up. Let me get let me get those stubbed out right now, and um, I'll see you in a little bit. A few moments later. Okay, so uh, I've stubbed out the basic Azure credential to allow my GitHub Actions pipeline to talk to Azure and do the things. Um, now I need to set up the backend. Okay, so now I've set up the the backend um, environment variables that I need um, on this uh, script execution, and you'll notice that um, all of them are using either vars or secrets to access um, different values, except for my backend key, which I'm using um, these environment variables that I set up at the top. Um, and so this uh, this is a good way to make sure that you know exactly what um, workspace you're working out of so so that you don't stomp on other people's toes. Um, but all of these that are vars or secrets, I'm going to have to go over into um, GitHub and set those things up. Um, we'll do that in a second. Uh, but for right now, I just want to get you know the rest of the setup. So I need to set the working directory, which of course is an environment variable. And then I need to set my actual script. And there we go. So I have my Terraform setup in place. Um, I am going to go and clean house on this because I don't think I don't think I need those. You know, um, and if 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 I do, I need to pipe them in using my YAML. So I should go ahead and just set up tfr file tfr variables for the application name. So now I think I have everything that I need set up. Um, oh, remember the TFR is uh, very, 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 very case sensitive. And this is a way to input Terraform, input variables to Terraform um, using environment variables. So I don't need a var file. Um, so you notice I remove them from the var file only to add them as individual environment variables with this all caps TF underscore cat all caps var. Uh, prefix to make sure that the value gets put in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set up my GitHub repo. I'm going to configure it with a, with a storage account and with ARM credentials so that we can do all the things. A few moments later. There we go. So I think I have all of my values set up. I've got my in the clear backend uh, configuration pointing at a storage account. I have my ARM uh, credential context, and then I have my ARM uh, credential secret. Um, notice that there's secrets stored on this tab and then variables stored on this tab. Um, basically dictates whether something's visible or whether something's hidden. So I think I'm good to go. I, I may have made a typo, okay, because, uh, I mean, full disclosure, I normally don't type this out. Um, and I did, I did cheat and copy pasta in a few places. But uh, I hope you forgive me that. Um, let, let's see if this uh, works right off the bat. Um, I'm just going to go uh, commit this. Now, by committing that YAML file, um, so we have an error. We have a failure. Our, our CD failed. Let's go. Every uh, uses and a run key. Every step must define a uses or a run key. So it's probably my, yeah, I think I did a YAML bad and I've just like included everything um, with a, uh, with an extra step there. 
Oh, and uh, this should be, uh, yeah, this should be uses. That was a goof. Um, this, uh, the name can be whatever I want it to be, set up Terraform. But the, the uses is really for a specific magic string, which is the, the type that you're going to use. Um, the type of GitHub action that you're going to use. Basically a pre-compiled action. Now here, I don't have a uses because I'm just running this script. Um, but even still, I need to make sure all that stuff ticks and ties. So I think I cleaned up my, um, my typos. Fix typos. And let's, that should automatically trigger an action because I pushed on domain. Yeah, GitHub actions are pretty straightforward. Okay, so we got through the basic YAML nasty. It looks like our provider is having issues authenticating. So I'm gonna need to check that. So I am setting these environment variables. Um, maybe it might just be, oh, it, 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 it's, I think it's just a Terraform validate. So this is the function user. Could this just be a Terraform validate thing? A few moments later. Yeah, so I think the validate issue went away, but I still have authentication issues. So another nice thing about GitHub Actions is you can look at the input parameters and as long as, as, long as they're not private, you can see what they resolve to. I like this um, because in, in Azure DevOps, um, I always find myself having to echo all this stuff out. So it's nice that they kind of do this um, for you so that you can kind of see what the, what the crap is wrong. Um, I, I do, I do appreciate that. So these are not coming through. Did I not like, I clearly, I did save, right? So it does look like I put in backend resource group name, but, uh, named it differently here and then was referencing it from my bash script. Uh, correctly. So I just, I think I just had to update that. However, the other, the other items aren't coming through. Unsupported block type. Where in the world? Oh, my bad. Cores belongs in the site config of the function app. Oops. So cores does not go in the application stack. It goes in the site config block. So yeah, it was not a credentials issue at all. It, uh, it appears to be, yeah, see, these are all coming through and all these are coming through and these are coming through. So I think we're good. And then the secret is blotted out, which is good. And it looks like uh, our apply is going. So we should be good. Rocking and rolling. A few moments later. And there we go. Um, Terraform apply completed. Um, backend is up and running and we added 10 resources and those guys are all right out here. So we got our managed identity that are, that's attached to our Azure function. We got our key vault, which is granted access policy to our function and to our Terraform user. We got our little app service plan, which is a little baby consumable plan. So there's going to be you know, no ability to scale out or anything like that, things like that. Um, it is uh, pricing plan Y1 with Linux as the operating system. And we got our app insights here, but of course nothing's attached to it. So there's, there's nothing set up. Um, and we got our function app and of course nothing is deployed to this function app, but you can go to the configuration and see some of the settings that, that I have set up already, which are that uh, instrumentation key that I got from App Insights, and then my little run from package setting, which is gonna allow me to deploy via zip uh, to this function app. So um, we, so, so that's it. This episode, we got our, our continuous deployment process um, stubbed out. Of course, there's all the, we've only done one step of that CD process, which is the provision of the environment. Um, the next step is gonna be to compile our code. Um, well, I guess the next step is to actually have code. And then the step after that is to compile and build your code, publish the code um, into uh, a zip artifact, and then deploy that zip artifact to our function app um, and see how we see, see how it works. 
Um, and then after that, it's about setting up observability and then making our function rock and do all sorts of crazy, awesome things. So that's the, that's it for part two. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, again, we're getting into GitHub actions and Azure functions and having a great old time. Uh, continue with me next time in part three, where I actually drop into Visual Studio and go back to my roots and write some C sharp. Won't be doing a lot of C sharp uh, coding in that episode, even still, because again, we're still setting up that connective tissue um, within our project to, to actually deploy um, our Azure function. So we're not to the point yet where I think it's a good idea to add a whole bunch of crazy code um, or modify things. We really just want to take, you know, a, a baseline Azure functions project, get it get it set up, get it into code and then deploy it. And even if it deploys the hello world that comes with the Azure function template, that's fine. Um, but our process will, will already be set in place where any changes we make to that uh, code base will automatically get deployed and then we can go test. Um, and so this creates kind of this um, deploy early, deploy often kind of um, muscle memory for a team so that uh, it's not like, a, oh crap, I built this cool thing, now how do I get it out there and deploy it? Um, you deploy from day one and you do integration testing uh, from day one. So that's that's kind of what, what I'm trying to show you guys how to do um, and where we're going. So I hope you enjoy this series. If you do, smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot. And next time, again, um, we're gonna be we're gonna be in Visual Studio, actual Visual Studio for Mac, for Mac, uh, but actual Visual Studio. So I uh, hope you join me then. Until next time, this is the Azure Terraformer signing off. Mm -hmm.